What's up everybody? Welcome back to Growing Organic. All right, today what we're doing is we're gonna be planting a pomegranate tree right here. It's in a 15 gallon container right now. Now I bought this, you can see here's the label. I bought this for $15. This was in a bare root form when I bought it. So $15 and it's been growing for a, for a couple years in here. You want to find a really warm and sunny spot in your your yard. So I have a, a place in mind in my front yard over kind of where I park my vehicle, which will be a perfect spot. But they are very drought tolerant, pest resistant. And this is a reason why I really like growing pomegranates. I hardly ever have any pest problems with this tree and the fruits are absolutely incredible. So let's go to the front yard. I wanna show you where I'm gonna plant this tree and how to prep the hole, the size of the hole. All right, let's move this to the front yard. Let me show you guys where we're gonna plant this. Let's move this other one. So right here, we're gonna dig a three foot wide hole. Let's move this one. So, right here, actually you guys should go back and watch the video where I buried food scraps for a year straight. I'll leave a link to the video so you guys can check those out because that's a good prep, what I did prepping this hole with food scraps, all my eggshells, coffee grinds, tea bags, banana peels, as well as other leaves and egg cartons, uh, paper products that are recyclable. So I dug this giant hole and did that for a year. So we have tons of nutrients. And on top of that, I have about a tr trash can full of compost good quality compost that's been sitting here for about six months. So get your outline, the shape and size, make sure you get a tape measure. This is about three feet or over three feet. I'm kind of maxed, maxed out, so I'm hitting concrete. You know, think about five or 10 years down the road, those roots are gonna be really needing that space. There's the sand right there. So you can see it's really it doesn't have any compost or any nutrients in that. That would not be good to plant in just sand. This is the my existing soil. 70% is gonna be broken down compost like this, like that. This has been sitting here for a little while. We want a large portion to be this. For for like eight bucks, you can build your own dolly. You don't have to lug this heavy tree around because this this is pretty heavy and it's still wet because I think I watered it just a couple days ago and they don't drink up a lot of water. That's the thing, you don't want to overwater these. They're not, these are drought tolerant plants. So end of February or mid-February here in Southern California, zone 10B. See how easy that is to move around now? Yeah, make sure you guys go back and watch the video when I planted this from bare root. Cause you'll see, uh, I forget how many, how long ago it was, but so you'll know, you'll be able to keep track from the beginning to the end when I bought this. All right, let's wheel this over. flowers. All right, let's get this thing wheeled over. All right, there's our hole. So I still got to dig down. Let's see, we got about, best to have a tape measure or a gauge. 
So this looks like about a 18 inches. I want to go about a foot below that. So I want to go about two foot six, two foot six deep. I'll be happy with that. So let's finish digging this and we'll get this tree planted in here. Also, these little things, you want to make sure you go ahead and get rid of those. You could actually transplant that into the ground and grow another tree. So it's another little tip. So right now this is a 15 gallon container, but what I started it out in was a five gallon. But so you're always upsizing and once this gets root bound in your 15 gallon container, this is when you want to put it in your, your hole, have the final spot for it. So it's like a three step process. So it's all about blending your soil to a rich, loamy, consistency, plenty of compost, and just a little bit of that existing soil. You can see what it looks like. But if you don't blend it, the plant's not gonna grow as well. All right, let me finish digging this out. Then we'll, I'll show you how to add the amendments. The worm castings, the rock dust, along with this compost and a year of food scraps being buried in here. There's tons of eggshells, coffee grinds, banana peels, you name it. This is really excellent environment for any tree. Pretty much any fruit tree will do well in this hole in Preby. So I'm glad you guys are watching this video. Oh, look at that. More grubs. Here's this grub. Look how big this thing is. Wow. Oh no. These things, this is what the raccoons are digging up. They're trying to... I don't know if it's still alive. Look at that thing. Ugh, these are just creepy looking, aren't they? But these are actually good for your soil. They might be, might have got killed from the digging. I'm not sure. I'm not sure what happened. Ew, it's just, these things are real creepy. This is the one of the biggest ones I've found though. Look like his belly is just full. Oh, he's ticklish. Oh, it looks like he's crawl. Oh, there he goes. So he was faking, faking it. He's got a lot of energy. Look at that. Here he goes. I don't know if he likes the water or not. Giant grub. Look at that thing. He wants to go back to the dirt. Let's give him, let's give him a little spot down here. Let, let him be, let him be. Okay, so worm castings. I'm gonna use probably this whole bag right here. This is about a, a half of a bag. Cause I can get these this pretty cheap at my landscape garden center. I think this whole bag was like $15 or something. So I'm going to put like $7 worth of this Worm Gold Plus and that'll be a good base. And if you look on here, all natural, organic, no chemicals, plus kelp and rock dust. That's good, but I'm going to add extra rock dust. So this is a cascade. Um, I think this is Canadian. Different glacier, glacial uh, rock dust. 
from a different part of the, the earth. I'm gonna give it, I'd say two cups. Approximately, try not to breed this stuff in. And we got some other rock dust from another part of the world. I think this is Utah. I believe this is uh, mined from. So I'll probably put a cup of this or two cups. Just kind of eyeball it. It's pretty good. So let's go ahead and show that it doesn't blow away. Kind of get that in there. And we're going to mix this with a shovel. Mix this whole pile up real well. Alright, I got all this soil blended over here. This pomegranate tree is ready to go in. Now, I've been kind of contemplating, I think I want to build a planter kind of like this because I can level things out and when you water it, it's much easier to water real deeply and you get a lot more root space and it's higher off the ground. So I'm thinking about building a box around this a little later since this is kind of sloped. We'll tilt it over and I'm going to just grab this by the trunk, smack the edges all the way around with your shovel or your foot. You want to lay this on its side and this it should slide right out. So what I want to do is lay this down, try not to break the branches off. I'll just lay it right on this pile. Should be okay. Right now, let's go ahead and roll it a little bit. Pick it with your heel. Right there, at the bottom. Right, that's good. Not too much in my damage roots. And watch this thing will slide right out. Doing all this with one hand. One hand. So I want to be very gentle with this. So I'm going to carefully roll it over there and support it from underneath so this doesn't break off. Because this even though there are quite a bit of roots, still want to be careful not to do too much damage. So I'm going to carefully roll it over closer to where we need to be. And also, I want to keep in mind, try to keep it centered in the hole and face the best side towards the west or towards what you're looking at. So, you know, look at the branch layout so I have one going this way one going that way that makes the most sense okay let's get this thing back filled pretty much any fruit tree should do good in this mix that I just did for you guys okay there's one more secret that I'm going to do before we get too far, what I'm gonna do is sprinkle mycorrhizal fungi. All right, this is the stuff we're gonna add. Pretty much any time I'm transplanting anything, I'll use this. It's an inoculant, so it's gonna inoculate all the roots with beneficial fungi and bacteria. Reduces transplant shock more efficient with water and nutrients, helps plants resist drought. So it's all types of benefits. This stuff is absolutely amazing. This is your secret ingredient here. And also when it starts fruiting, I'll probably just give it a general purpose organic fruit, fruit tree fertilizer, just to give it a little more kick. But 
to be honest, this tree will probably be fine for a couple seasons, just as it is. So let's take some of this. I'm gonna try to actually get it on the side of the plant as well. Just kind of toss it, toss it around close to the roots and that will all kind of colonize in there. I would say maybe two tablespoons kind of tap the side of this going down see now we got all that stuff on the sides and on the bottom that is gonna make a big difference all right let's get this thing backfilled won't we'll be done with this Anybody can do this. This dirt is so light and uh, loamy and airy and all that compost. It's a good sign. If your dirt is too heavy, most likely you don't have enough compost, organic nutrients in there. So once I get it about halfway, I will give it a little light packing. Give it a light packing around. Make sure it's kind of even. Just kind of pack about that hard. You don't want to wait till you get all the way to the top and then pack it because it might be some air pockets. And then we'll top it off. Okay, let's get this thing finished off okay so I still have a little soil left but you can see down here I haven't filled it all the way to the top again I'm gonna build a wood planter kind of like this one over here so it's gonna be up about this high but I don't have the planter built yet so it's gonna be hard because the water is gonna want to run down the hill so I'm gonna do a pre-water so make sure the water gets down deep, you know, below here before I fill it all the way to the top. Otherwise, it may not be soaking all the way down. I want to get a good, solid, heavy soaking. So I'm going to slow water this. I made a berm going around with the soil. Make a nice bowl and do a pre-soak. Soak this thing real good. See so on this downhill side. The water is going to want to spill out. If you have a flat area, it's not as bad, but I want to do a pre water and then I'll fill it up again and do another water. So let me get the hose. Now I'll probably, do, I can just let this do a slow trickle water. We can just let this run for a half hour and just let it soak in real deep. So I want this to soak all the way down two feet in and just completely saturate all that new soil so I could just leave and come back in a half hour and this thing will be completely saturated then I can finish off topping this off it looks like this water is filling in pretty good so I'm doing a, a slow soaking because I want it to soak you know, that could be you know 10 20 gallons of water that can slowly soak into here and then I won't have to water this for a long time Okay, so you can see I got everything leveled to the top of the plant. Again, I still have to build this box, but in the meantime, I got it kind of into a round circle. So at least the top is finished off. Now we're gonna put this mulch on. Just, we're just gonna keep it on top for now so I can finish the sides off later this will protect the soil keep the water from evaporating too fast in here 
that's how you want to plant a pomegranate tree or for that matter any any tree any fruit tree I like to kind of spray the whole tree down as well any insects and uh, just help it absorb water through the uh, leaves as well keep it hydrated during this hot transplant okay so the last thing I'm gonna do is we're gonna give it a good compost worm tea as well we're gonna give it some compost tea as well this will really inoculate it get it off to a good start I'll probably be making a video on compost tea as well how to make this but this will really give it a good jump start as well all right let's um, go over to this pomegranate tree I want to show you the last thing we're gonna do is bury some food scraps so every few days I accumulate some food scraps and what what I like to do is bury them around my fruit trees okay so get your shovel what we're gonna do is simply just dig a little hole What do you think, Pumpkin? I think he's looking for the raccoons. So make sure you um, take your food scraps and just dump them in. You can see there's quite a diversity in here. You really want to use eggshells, banana peels. Those are some of the best things you can put in your soil. Um, you got some pineapple some lemon, um, some peelings, some other things. But this is a really big game changer right here. So make sure you guys always don't throw away your food scraps because these trees are gonna really love, love this and it's gonna attract more of those grubs and worms and different uh, bacteria and fungi. So let's, bury, let's cover this up. Just pack it in a little bit, just so. Simple as that, super easy. See, already just in a few days, these things are doing amazing. All right, guys, thanks for watching. That's just about it. Thanks for sticking with me here and um, planting this tree with me. Make sure you hit that subscribe button, click like. Comment below, tell me about what trees you're growing. 